Hello friends and welcome back to Enterprise Architecture. Now we are about to build the facility you see in front of you here, but I'm actually recording this at the end of the video. It's taken me a little while to put all of this together. This build took a really long time, a whole lot of hours. But I am going to be, number one, releasing the blueprints for the different wall pieces and whatnot that you see in front of us here. So grab those links from the description below if you want to use these in your build. I've got them provided, no cost, no charge. Go ahead and use them at will. Second thing I want to mention is that this video and probably the next couple of videos might be a little bit late. I'm still struggling with a couple of little minor health issues, nothing serious, nothing for anybody to worry about, but that does mean that my recording schedule has gotten completely out of whack. So I'm just basically producing these and recording these and releasing these just in time rather than a little bit ahead and having a backlog of content. So that just means that things are a little bit slow right now. So apologies for the delay. And then the last thing I want to mention really quickly is it really does help me out a lot if you would like the videos that you are watching, mine and other people's, uh, because it helps us small content creators get out there, get our word out there, get our name out there in front of other people. So it really does help us in the algorithms a lot. And of course, the algorithms rule everything around us these days. So if you like the videos and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a whole, whole bunch. Not that, you know, that's my end goal as a creator. I just like to make content. It uh, makes me happy. But at the end of the day, it does really help. So please consider liking and subscribing. So with no further ado, let's dive right in. Now, last episode, we finished setting up our new space elevator platform, which you see on the left here, and set up our factories in the distance there so that we could unlock phase two of the space elevator, which means we are on to tiers five and six. So today we are gonna get started on rushing tiers five and six. And the first thing that we are gonna start with is rushing oil. Now, oil is critically important in this game as I think we all know. It allows us to make plastic and a variety of other things that we're gonna need, rubber, all sorts of critical components here are made with that. So that's the first thing that we are going to need to do today. Now, from there, we are gonna start looking at the next little bits and pieces that we're gonna need, which includes industrial manufacturing. Now, we can't unlock any of this until we have rubber and plastic, which means we need to set that up first. The other thing we're gonna start looking at is trying to get Logistics Mark IV, which will happen after the thing I just said. And of course, also monorail trains. Trains are amazing in this game. We desperately need them, but we cannot unlock these until we have computers. And that means we have to have plastic, which means we have to finish off the tier five industrial manufacturing first. So we're gonna add this to our to-do list as the next thing that we're gonna get. So first things first, we need to find our oil nodes. All of those are relatively close by here, or at least we have a few of them that are relatively close by here three here that I've already found. And then we've got three more over in this direction. If we just flit our way over here real quick, more impure oil, great. So we're gonna throw down all of our oil extractors on these nodes here. And let's go ahead and grab these last few around here as well. How about you? What are you? You are normal, also good. And let me see about these other ones. I'm just gonna keep laying all of our oil extractors down and then we are gonna clean up our mess and figure out how to bring all of that into one place. All right, I think that takes care of all of the nodes in this region that we have now laid down our oil extractors on top of. Now the only thing to do is to wire all of these up into our main system. So we're gonna use a series of power lines to get us back to the main base. We're just gonna do this a region at a time here. So let's connect this one to this one, and then this one over to here and here to here, and so forth and so on until we have all of this nice and neatly connected. All right, I've got everything wired up finally. And in this whole region, I believe we have a total of 1140, 1140 meters, cubic meters of oil per minute that we can rock out here. That is a lot. What remains is to route all of our pipes together into a single processing plant. Now, before we build that processing plant, we have a 
tiny little adventure to go on. Now, what adventure is it that we're going on? We have not unlocked even a single drop pod so far, and we really need to do that because I am very eager to get some alternate recipes here. Notably, let's go ahead and load that in. Did that just take all of it? No, it only took one, great. Notably, we want to get the alternate recipes for reclaiming our not used plastic and turning it into rubber and vice versa. So we're just gonna go around to a couple of crash sites here that I believe are in this area and scout them out and see if we have the ingredients we need to unlock them. There we go, there's another one there. All right, let's grab that one up one more for our collection all right we have collected for ourselves a whole bunch of hard drives 17 in fact so we are going to run through these until we can find ourselves all of the recipes that we need and as you can tell we have instant research turned on which is uh, useful for us ah here we go polymer resin this is what i'm talking about here let's go ahead and get that one really want those other two uh heavy oil residue that's one of them i think ah uh, recycled plastic now we are getting somewhere okay so i think we have all of the recipes that we are going to need here so yeah we just need to run all of our oil to a single location and i think we're going to build out on top of this water here i think this is really going to be the key and then we'll bring back in all of our various ingredients by train back to our factory there in that direction let's go out a little bit into the water and let's just put one down for now let's see where we end up here that's just under the surface if i put a single platform is that above water now yeah, that is exactly above water. So we're gonna go ahead and take our one meter foundation and we are just gonna see about laying out a platform for ourselves, something nice and big that we can use to start designing this factory. Let's go, let's go 30, let's go 30 units. How about that? That's gonna be way bigger than we need. You know what, I don't think we even need to go 30. Let's do 21 and let's do, seven let's uh let's clear these out all right so before we start laying out our new oil processing facility what we're gonna do is unlock the mirrored buildings for the refinery this is another wonderful mod from Aquila industrial i absolutely love all of the stuff that he does and he does so much of it it's it's just an absolute delight but this way we can actually lay out refineries that will match on both sides let me show you what i mean so these refineries are very large as you all may recall let's figure out how that's going to go i think we're going to go this direction with it honestly so let's go ahead and see if we put it right here no you know what i want this to be i want to give myself a little more room here so we're going to go over just about there that's going to give us enough room to route all of our logistics so now because we had unlocked the mirrored refineries earlier we can lay these out just like this and that means that our inputs are going to line up so this mirrored refinery looks exactly the same as the one next to it but these are actually inputs not outputs you wouldn't know it unless you actually try to connect your items into it but that's the way he's mirrored this so it'll make it nice and easy to be able to stick items in and that way we can just have a chain right here where our splitters just literally just kind of go down just like this all right, so I think we're gonna lay down a whole bunch of our refineries here. And I think where we're going to start this chain, I believe what we wanna do here is to uh, do rubber on one side and plastic on the other. That's gonna give us a lot of heavy oil residue. Now, heavy oil residue doesn't really have a lot of good uses for us at this point, since we quite frankly are not doing a fuel build. We're using all solar here for our power. So we don't really need fuel directly. Fuel can be used to turn into other things, but that's that's not really helpful for us. First things first, we do need to do the math on how many of these that we can support in a single go. So we can only do 300 per minute, I think, in a single pipe. Let's just double check that. It might be 150. 
Is that right? Yeah, it's 300 per minute. So that means that we can only do 10 of these refineries off of a single pipe. So we can stack multiple pipes, but that gets to be a little bit of a pain. So what we might do is think about moving all of these refineries up a level so that we have ourselves a logistics floor underneath. I think that's actually what we're gonna do here. And the logistics floor we're gonna make nice and big so that we can handle as many of these as we want. Because again, we have over a thousand of our oil that we need to deal with. So 300 is all we're gonna get off of one of these rows. So roughly we're gonna need two sets of two rows of 10, I believe, to get vaguely in the ballpark of where we should be. So I'm gonna tear all of this up and we're gonna rebuild it real quick with a logistics floor underneath. There we go. And that should give us plenty of space to move things around here. So the only ingredients that these are gonna have going into them are going to be the oil. So all we need to do is lay down our pipeline supports. Let's do this all the way down here. And then all we need to do is line up and get our splitters, our junctions in here. So this needs to go like right here. So in theory, we can put it right here. And now it's just a question of whether or not I can get these pipes to match up. We want those to ideally be horizontal to vertical. I think noodle is also gonna be fine. We can just noodle those a little bit and back up here. There we go. That's gonna work pretty well. It looks a little flailing octopusy, but I think it'll work pretty, pretty good for us. So let's go ahead and lay those out real quick here. We're gonna put all of these in place. Okay, and there we have our two sets of refineries set up. This means now we can basically handle 1,200 uh, cubic meters of our oil per minute in this facility. That's a little more than we actually are gonna have, but that's, uh, that's, that's gonna work for us. That's gonna work for us. We'll uh, remove a couple of those pipes so that the numbers all work out properly for us. The only thing left to do is to make this nice and gothy by making everything black. We're gonna paint these black just so that we know that this is oil coming in and we'll be able to keep track of it. So we're just gonna do this real fast. With that done, the only thing left to do is to handle all of the outputs as well. So let's go ahead and set all of these up for regular plastic. That means that heavy oil residue is gonna be coming out. And the second row of these, we are gonna do completely with rubber. So we have to worry about now our output here. So 10 by 10 means we are getting 100 residual rubber off of each of these rows. And again, we can put 300 in a pipe. So this middle one, we can probably actually combine into a single pipe if we want the output from that rubber. And then here on the one end, we'll just have an extra left over. So we'll just have to figure out how we're gonna split that and run those back together. For now, I think what we're gonna do here is run them directly underneath. So let's go ahead and set up our pipes for that. And maybe, you know what, actually, I am tempted to stack these so that I can put the belts underneath for our output. I think that might actually be the easiest way to do this. All right, so logistics are logisticized. This is what we like to see. All of our belts are run for the inputs and the outputs. Everything is nice and tidy and ready to go. So we are doing 600 cubic meters per second per side here. So technically 300 per each of these four rows. We've got two lines of oil going in. So all we have to do now is actually route the logistics in from our various locations. Now, I think this is going to continue to expand for us. We have more room to go here as far as moving up this chain, and we can also go horizontally. We have a lot of options here. I've given us plenty of space for expansion. So to that end, I think we're gonna give ourselves plenty of space for things coming in as well here. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a few more platforms in space. Let's go down this way a little bit more, and then we're gonna, whoop, up. Oh, then we're gonna go this way a little bit more, just like that. Perfect. Now, one problem that you typically have with these sorts of setups is that you're gonna wanna have a lot of uh, back pressure because otherwise the last few will take forever to 
to actually fill up. So to that end, what we're going to do is go back to our organization. We are going to grab our fluid buffer storage, and these are just a little too tall as we can see here. So we might actually sit this down in the water a little bit and then go down and back up so that we can get this into our system here, because ideally what we want to do is have extra oil storage for all of these containers. Now, we also have at least a minimum of four lines coming in here and probably just a little bit more. I just remember that there's a few more nodes that we actually had missed, which are all the way over here. These, these little leaves you see here or drops. Well, I guess these are droplets that I put in. Um, these three will give us another combined 240, I believe, of oil so that we can top up to the exact uh, 1200 that we are going to need for this or yeah, 1200 that we're going to need for this plus a little extra here. So to that end, we need to have plenty of room to bring these in, plenty of room to store the extra oil. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to tear out this middle layer here and use that for our oil storage in those tanks. And now this is just a little set into the water and with any luck, this will be low enough for us. Let's just double check that this is indeed low enough by grabbing up our fluid buffer, sitting it right here in the middle of this, right in the middle, stuck in the middle with you there. And if we pull this out, is this gonna go nicely right over top here? Yeah, it goes nicely right over top. That is exactly what we want to see. So let's go ahead and lay down a few of these. I'm going to actually put these in the middle of these platforms uh, just for, you know, simplicity's sake. Obviously, I could snuggle these a lot closer if I wanted, but we're not going to do that. So let's bring this all the way down here. And, I, you know, I'd love to have a big fluid buffer here instead, but there's absolutely no way that we'd have room for that. Also, we have not unlocked the big fluid buffers, but those are going to be high on our list in the near future. All right, so we have these four tanks so far. So we're gonna do one per line and that's gonna help us build our back pressure. So to that end, we wanna be able to bring in all of our pipes nicely, neatly in one space here. So we are gonna be going back to the wall holes for that. So let's go to use our basic walls to start just to be able to line this up. Um, I think we're gonna do it on this foundation here and we're gonna go over this way just like that. And then we're gonna try and make this look as nice and neat as we possibly can. So let's grab our pipeline wall holes here and we are gonna put these really densely packed. All right, there's that all cleaned up nicely and neatly. These pipes are looking much, much better with some nice right angles to them. So now we have these buffers where these various pipes are going to flow. We're gonna then drop our valves on here. Gotta make sure these are pointing in the right direction. We're gonna snuggle these up right next to the edge of those outlets there, just like that. I'm gonna do all four of these. There we go. And now we are gonna go ahead and make sure that these outlets, the valves, are turned off for now, because we want this to fill up. So let's go ahead and do all of these all the way filled up, or at least hopefully these will fill up very quickly. All right, so let's start bringing our platforms down this way and out. Now, I think it is gonna run, yeah, right into the ground here, and that is that is okay by us. Let's see here, can we do, let's do five, and then let's go through until we get to the other side there, like that. Yeah, so that's gonna go up and over a little bit but it's still gonna be effectively the lowest spot. I'm okay with that clipping through the ground. Uh, that doesn't really bug me. Um, and then all the way back out here, I think. I think this is gonna be how we are gonna do this. Great, and that gives us a straight shot there. And we are gonna go ahead and pull all four of our pipelines in to this one spot. Now, this doesn't mean that we need to do a little bit of clever negotiating to manage because uh, we do want to max out the 300 pipes, um, excuse me, the 300 meter per second pipes as we can. And at long last, there we have all of our logistics finally complete. This took me, uh, what, about uh, an hour and a half, two hours to get all of this done? This was a lot of laying out of factory components, my friends. 
Now, all the way down here, that means we have four full 300 lines and a 180 line of leftover stuff that I'm not doing anything with at this point. So that accounts for all of our supply lines. Now all that's left is for our output lines. And this is where things get a little bit more complicated. I do want to output all of these ingredients somewhere, and that's coming off of these merger lines. We also still have to deal with all of this leftover stuff, all of this heavy oil residue, which I think we're gonna build another set of refineries off the back of this. Otherwise, these, as we expand, are gonna go in this direction and in this direction, so horizontally. But residue is gonna be a separate and a connected facility here. Now at this point, friends, my audio recording cut out for reasons I still don't quite understand, so we're recording this in post. But what we basically have done here is added two more additional platforms here. So our first platform is still creating our rubber and our plastic. We're then taking the residual heavy oil out of that and converting it into fuel in this second facility here. So we're gonna create a, a large amount of fuel. The last facility back here is gonna be able to take that fuel and a little bit of rubber and convert it into plastic. Now we are producing quite enough rubber to be able to keep up with the production necessary to use all of our fuel. So I built this little side platform over here and we're gonna use that to store our additional fuel. And eventually this is gonna be a platform where we burn the extra fuel to make power, just to use it up so we have something to do with that secondary output. So that's gonna go here. We have not yet unlocked any of the power production though necessary for that. We still need a few more ingredients to do that. So at a future date, we are gonna build out this platform. But for now, this is where it's at least gonna go. We're just gonna put some tanks down temporarily so that we can store it and flush out those buffers as we go. And with that done, we are ready to turn on our fuel production, our oil production. So let's open up all of these valves and we will start getting plastic and rubber into our system. There we go. Now you can see that everything is starting to be produced. We have plastic and rubber coming in. All of these wonderful, wonderful machines are slowly filling up with fuel. It's just going to take a little while for all of that oil to load back up in there. But soon we will be producing a decent amount of plastic and rubber per second. And here comes our very first plastic and rubber into our system. That's exactly what we wanna see. We're putting them into these wonderful storage containers, the double wide ones from, again, Aquila's Mods for the extra storage. So we're just gonna hang out for a little while, wait for that plastic to come in so that we can start unlocking a few more things for our build. Now, the last thing that we need to do is start decorating this facility. So to that end, we had done some nice little industrial walls last episode that I really liked. They look kind of like this. And I wanted to use something that's kind of very thematically similar to that, but I thought it would look really nicely having some diagonal walls in there rather than just these flat walls. So I started tinkering with a couple of other designs here. So let's load those up real quick. So we have these diagonal wall pieces that I built that I think are gonna look pretty good. Let's go ahead and pull these in. So they're just variations on a theme here with these big metal pillars going up and then small metal pillars on the inside. I've done a couple of different versions. I've got this and then I've got another set that have walls on them. And I think those work really, really well for what we are trying to achieve here. So we're gonna go ahead and put those in place and take a look and see how it works. And here's how we're doing this. We're just basically using these diagonal metal pillars and we are gonna zoop all the way down here. And that will give us that angle that we need. Again, this is a, uh, a nice, neat little trick here. You'll see Fluxo doing this one a lot. Again, one of my favorite builders. There we go. And then to remove the pillars that are behind there, we'll just pull this out and we'll pull these out here. There we go. And then we can just continue these metal pillars down off of this edge. And we'll zoop this last one all the way down into the ground or just, just above the ground. Let's do that. There we go. And now we'll take this off. Perfect. And that is a nice little wall section. We're going to save that one. Uh, we're going to call this 4B. This is, this is twice as wide. So this is three foundations wide wall. Great. 
All right, so there is our blueprint, and this is what we're gonna be using for these sections. So notice that we have three foundations wide on each of these sections here. And so that's gonna make up the main area of this base. And we're actually gonna to wanna to come out a little bit with it here, um, because we wanna build it off of this edge. So let's go ahead and run this all the way down here. Great. And now for each of these sections, we can build it into the wall there. So let's uh, let's grab these blueprints, let's grab the pieces, and we are gonna grab the 4B that we just put in place. All right, great. Let's go ahead and put down a few more of these real quick. All right, so there is our wall facade. All right, so from there, we are gonna wanna put on our roof. So let's go ahead and go up a little bit here. I don't wanna go to there and then we're going to want to go up another two meters from that so let's go a two meter foundation i think that's going to be right where we want it and if i measured correctly yeah that's that's about right on that line where it'll clip through the top of those so let's go ahead and take a look real quick at our roofs it's under architecture oh it's right in front of me grab those flat roofs back up here and is it going to let me put it right on there? Now we're going to go out one. There we go. That's where we want it. And let's see here. If we go this way with it. And this way with it. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's take a look real quick and see. Yeah, that's still getting full exposure. Each one's putting out 20 megawatts during the height of the day. We will live with that. That works pretty darn well for us. So we can remove these back again. Now, the other thing to do is figure out how we want the side pieces of this building to work. And I think we want them to do the same thing here. So we have come out two foundations on each side there. So we're gonna go another two foundations this way and then all the way down. So we go here and then 15 over, 14, 15, perfect. And that'll allow us to do more of those. And I think if I did that correctly, these should line up nicely. So let's try that really quick here. Go back to our diagonal wall. And we just need to make sure that these are just right, put in place in the right spot. I think it's there. Yeah, that looks right. And then I think if we do every other one, it should line up nicely for us. All right, so there is our general facade for our building. Now all that remains is to fill in those gaps with something that's gonna make it kind of look dimensional and also deal with these corners, which are uh, quite frankly, super, super awkward. And I also think that I wanna do a platform all the way around it. I don't love the look of these foundations here on this perimeter ring. And then underneath here, we want to put in some concrete pillars, I think. Now, these I want to just nest in under these edges here. So I think we might go half a foundation over with them rather than all the way in. So let's snuggle these up on these corners just like that. Let's hold that in place. Make sure that's right where we want it. Yeah, I think it is. Let's go ahead and put that down. And let's do a few more right next to it. All right, so I think that's the general thing that we're gonna go for here. This sort of a concrete pillar facade in front of the metal facade. And see, I've actually added to these so that they run down into this concrete. And those pillars work really, really nicely. I do wanna break this up a little bit, however. I think I am going to break up some of this space using the other ones, the uh, smaller pillars. I think these are gonna work really, really nicely so that we have plenty of room to walk along this as sort of a, a promenade. And I guess, you know, we could even go ahead and use some of our various uh, architecture beams here, like a modern railing could go very, very nicely on this edge here, uh, sort of like this. I think that probably is what we're gonna end up doing. And we will, uh, of course, paint it black just so that it looks a little bit more interesting here. Maybe we paint it gray, I don't know, but I think that's probably gonna be what we are gonna go for. Although modern railings might even look even better, these industrial railings, sorry. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and add those down this way. And let's add those in black here. And 
there. Yeah, those are those are looking a little bit cooler, I think, for this. So we're gonna play with this a little bit. Let me uh, try a few more things with the pillars here and see how they look. All right, this is starting to come together. I like this little mosaic sort of thing I'm getting out of this with the big concrete pillars and the small concrete pillars, which I painted black, but again, this is satisfactory, so black means light gray. You get what you get. So I've started running that all the way down this way, and I've gone ahead and made myself a blueprint for the big sections of this at least. It sits rather nicely on top of these platforms here. I do need to go through and make another one for the small pieces, but that should be pretty easy. Then to extend this, all you have to do is go and grab a concrete pillar and drop it off the bottom to whatever depth you want this to be. So this works pretty well for us and we can set it up really, really quickly. All right, so we're coming up on the finish here. So I created a half size version of the industrial wall that we used in the previous episode for our factory. And I think that matches very nicely with the facade that we have going on here. So I'm gonna use that to finish fleshing this out now that I have the rest of these docks built all the way around this space. All right, so there is our finished out base. I think this is looking pretty sharp. We do need to go through and add some railings and some walkways and some access ramps, things like that. But I'm not going to do that this episode because next episode we are heading straight to trains, unlocking those so that we can start connecting our plastic and our rubber back to our main facility all the way back over there. So since we'll be building out a whole set of platforms and stations and whatnot, we're not gonna put any ramps or walkways, anything like that, just quite yet. But the end result here, I think is pretty striking and I really, really love the way this turned out. But for now, that brings us to the end of this episode of Enterprise Architecture. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you back here next time. Bye friends.